The Backdoor GA Podcast for 2023 is now brought to you by Steed Motor Group. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, visit steedmotorgroup.ie. We are now delighted to announce our second sponsor of the podcast. Harper Finley are a professional service recruitment company operating nationwide and are dedicated to helping people find their dream job. The Backdoor GA Podcast for 2023 is now brought to you by Steed Motor Group. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, visit steedmotorgroup.ie. So delighted now to be joined by former Galway senior footballer Sean O'Dupeyer and former Westmead senior footballer Jerry Egan to look ahead to Galway versus Westmead uh, this Saturday in round two of the all Ireland series in group two at five o'clock in Mullingar. Uh, the game not being streamed on RT or GA Go, so be very much a uh, big crowd expected in Mullingar this weekend. Just before we do get into that game, uh, Sean O'Gee, you're obviously on TG Car duty on Friday there, uh, Go MAO in the minor final. The minors just coming up uh, short in the end, in that two goals really from Mayo in the second half just ultimately proved to be the difference. Yeah, I so yeah, and like you know, you couldn't say but say that Mayo deserved to win on the night. Um, it was the second match between them in the championship this year. Galway had beaten them in an earlier uh, round robin fixture by a point down in Casabar, which was a great win. But and you know, I suppose the 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 Galway management, you know, don't don't like to make excuses, but to be fair to them. Um, probably Galway's most effective player, Sean Welsh. Um, I mean, he wasn't a factor in the game the last day at all. Um, he was taken off after 10 minutes. Um, it looks like he's gone for the season. Um, you know, a problem with his knee. So he was a huge loss because, you know, a lot of the play goes through him. Um, and then on top of that, we'd say the top scorer, against Mayo in the earlier round, Jack Keenahan from Tomb Stars, he, as far as I'm aware, broke his collarbone in training. So you're down two of your forwards. And then we'll say Shea McGlinchey, the captain, and if you like, you know, apart from Sean Welch and maybe Charlie Cox, the the, the leader on the team, um, you know, there was rumours going around that he was injured before the game. And, okay, he had his kind of purple patch in the first half where he scored two points, you know, in the space of 10 minutes. But apart from that, he was very quiet. So, you know, I suppose the big challenge now that they have is, you know, they're playing Derry on Saturday week. Um, it's their first loss of the season. So how are they going to deal with that? Um, I mean, last year, you know, the same minor management was there and they were beaten comprehensively in the kind of final by Mayo. But, you know, they turned it around to play Dublin in the quarterfinal and bet them. Um, so it can be done. And if you look back at, we'd say, the minor results, we'd say, in the last few years, you know, when they since they brought in this new format um, where you have your quarterfinals, you know, the 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 champions of each province sometimes, you know, they because they're so young, they find it difficult to deal with being champions and then, you know, being favourites then for a quarterfinal. So that's kind of there's no pressure on Galway. Um, you know, I you know, looking in from the outside, uh Derry probably will be favourites. So, you know, um, you know, I wouldn't discount Galway at all, but you know, it is a challenge. Yeah, and uh, and just on on the result, I suppose. There still is a lot of positives to take away from the performance. Obviously, they didn't get the results. And as you said, they're like last year, they lost Mayo twice and they're able to come back. So if, it's it's definitely not a write-off of their season at all now whatsoever. Like they can definitely recover from this. It's definitely manageable. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And I like I actually when I knew I was coming on, I I um you know I We've got the program from last Friday, so I'm just looking at you know the the squad here in front of me, and you know there's some serious players in that Galway team. Uh, you know I'm just Ross Cohn at six there. I mean he's a Rolls Royce of a footballer. Yeah, it looks very um, nice. yeah, super player. And Vinnie Gill there, cornerback. 
was his first start, I think, for, you know, for a bit. And, you know, probably a bit rusty. He got a red card, but, you know, it was just, I think it was two yellow, so he'll be okay. Um, and then up front, um, you know, I'm a great, I'm a big fan of Kieran Mulhern, centre forward, you know, very rangy player, um, you know, very good left foot. I suppose by his own standards, he, he was, you know, he was quieter than usual the last day. Um, he missed kind of a reasonably easy free that would have put Galway three points up at the start of the second half. So, you know, he's a guy that, um, you know, could be a match winner for Galway. So, you know, like there is, there is, there's a lot there to, to work on. And of course, I have to give, I suppose, a mention, a special mention to uh, Finan O'Connella from... What a goal. What a goal. I mean, what a pass. Uh, and, and he did well to, you know, to gather the ball. But then the little shimmy bought him a half second of, 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 of space and he buried it. So, like, his family are steeped in Caro. GA, his father, I would have played with him, and his three uncles, Jer, Peter, and Colin. So, you know, they're football mad. And whilst the result didn't go uh, Galway's way, I'm sure they were delighted, you know, with his, with his contribution. Yeah, and as we're saying, there are a number of positives to take away from that. Uh, Goy minor team, as Sean O'Brien mentioned, they face Derry in the All Ireland quarter final on Saturday week. Uh, so that's definitely a game to look forward to for the group, and they'll be looking to rebuild and recover and try and progress in to the All Ireland semi final. Uh, former Westmead footballer Jerry Egan also with us. Jerry, when the sun's out on an evening like this evening, are you, are you missing the intercounty game? No, I'd much rather be here now at the moment. Ah, no, um, I suppose just. So I know it might, might come in as well, but um, I suppose when you just make your mind up, that's it. And I had my mind made up last year that regardless of what happened, it was kind of my last year because just the body couldn't handle the load anymore. And I suppose it was nearly two years nearly preparing for kind of retirement, you know. Um, I did my cruise in 2019, kind of came back too early. A common mistake of nearly most GA players and just never really kind of recovered right. And I'm kind of the type of fellow, I'm either all in or I'm not. And I was stepping out of a lot of training sessions. And look, uh, to be honest, I was nearly in pain every every training session went out there. So the enjoyment was going out of it as well. So um, obviously the big days, you'd miss them, as you said, the sunshine. But from an overall point of view, we know it was the right thing to do. To step away and, you know, I'd be only in there on reputation nearly more than form. Right? So you're preventing a young lad from, from getting... Um, minutes and you know experience in high profile games you know how's the body now I thought it'd be better but it's not <laughs> <laughs> ah no just ah it's good look and said from a club point of view um, you can kind of pick and choose your, your session but it'd still be trained relatively hard just I like the whole I suppose when, you, when you're involved in such a professional outfit for 13 12 13 years it's kind of old habits die hard, you know, so I, I do like to just get into the gym, do running and um, I'm enjoying the new challenge of club in relation to pushing him on a bit further. Um, we've lost five county finals, nearly a shame to say, in the last 12, 13 years. So trying to put huge focus on that and time and effort and experience and bringing the young guys through. So it's a different challenge um, and it's not as strenuous on the body, you know. You talked just there about a crucial injury you obviously suffered and just that this was going to be your final year just, just with the way your body was. When you go back to the club, is it just maybe that, obviously when you're in Westmead, it's such a high intensity, it's so demanding. Is it just when those intensity levels go down, how you're able to kind of manage better through club? Yeah, just it's a lot of management. Um Put it this way, like when you're starting, just say on, on your county team, you have to be training every single night. And I was, in fairness, I went in kind of late into the panel last year and just I had other commitments at the time. And in fairness, Jack showed a lot of faith in me and threw me kind of straight in from, from where I go. And I kind of, I was grateful, but I didn't manage the load well, as in I just went from zero to 100, even though I was doing a lot of work behind the scenes. 
there's no comparison being out on the pitch and twisting and turning and all the rest. So um I said I played a start the first two or three games, wasn't playing well, got into the kind of middle of the Talton Cup and I, and I rang Jack and I just said I have to take a step back here. Um I said I can't manage the load, body's breaking down, giants are paying me. So I said, look, I'd be more than happy to come on as a sub. You know, I can only pick my training sessions here and there. So all those kind of factors fed into the decision of saying, look, here, I'm walking away. This is time to go. And just getting back to the point as well that from a training, from a club perspective, the demand isn't as high. The body can recover a little bit better. I can manage myself a little bit better. They know what to expect to be down there as well. So as I said, I am enjoying it. It's kind of more of a, a mental challenge down there because you're nearly getting frustrated. Why aren't the lads putting in the same effort as I'm putting in? Do you know what I mean? So I'm enjoying it. I really am enjoying it. Have you been able to go to Westmead games or has it been hard? I went, I, I, I haven't gone to as many as I should have went, to put it that way. Um, I went to two of them. <laughs> um, planned to go into the Gullet again, now this again. Um, so... But obviously, I, I watched the game last week. I didn't get off to it. I have been watching it closely. I was following the Lau game on Twitter. And to know something, it's actually easier played than following the game because at least you have some sort of a control on the game. But um, I, honest to God, I, I just want the lads to do well in there and perform to the best they can. And, and like if, as I said, if I walked away this year and the lads went one in Leinster, there'd be no regrets there whatsoever. You know, I'm a huge fan of Westmead GA and... That's it. Go with Westmead, obviously, uh, the main event, round two of the All-Ireland Series, as I mentioned uh, earlier on. Sean Og, it's, it's, a, it's a big weekend for Galway. It's another game where they're dealing with this expectation as real All-Ireland contenders. It's, it's a huge chance now this weekend for Galway to put themselves in a great position to be a seed one. Yeah, I think so. Um you know, obviously Westmead put in a superb performance last weekend against Armagh. Um, you know, they were unlucky. Um, the goal was fortuitous, kind of a hanging ball. And then it's very difficult to, you know, when the momentum is with Armagh and they're at home and every score then after that, you know, the home crowd and all that. So... Like I, I, I didn't see the game um live, but I've seen it since. And you know, the thing that struck me about Westmead is, you know, well, you know, I, I don't I don't mean this now, like like they looked they looked very comfortable in we'd say the company that they were keeping, as in like Armagh have been at the start of the year. You know, they've been touted in, in, in certain circles as being, you know, very dark horses for in all Ireland. And, you know, that was the thing that struck me as in like Westmead were physically, you know, tactically, you know, they were on a par. Um, and I suppose the big challenge for them is are they able to repeat that? Um, I think as well, you know, for me, because I, like I know them, um, I played with him. Um, he he travelled to Australia in 1999. He was only I'd say he was only 18 or 19 years of age on the Compromise Rules team. So he was the 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 baby of the group. But just the way he carried himself, um, you know, very um, you know comfortable in his own skin, very confident, you know, without being arrogant um, as a as a footballer. And and you know the way they say that a team reflects the manager's personality. Well, that was the thing that struck me watching with Smith. You know, they played with confidence. Um, and again, like, you know, there's some there's some very good players on that team. I mean, you know, once again, you know, John or John Heslin, you know, he kind of, he does really, really brilliant stuff. And, you know, he's kept his standards um, high. Um, you know, these past few years now, you know, he, he had... Um, you know, he, he was a great uh, Sigerson player, um, you know, earlier in his career. But he's, you know, he's maintained those standards. And we say the likes of um, Luke McLaughlin, you know, they're, they're great players. So the, the challenge for them, for Westmead, is to 
repeat that. Um, the cat is out of the bag, really. You know, Galway have been warned. Um, Westmead have, you know, have had seven days. Whereas Galway have had two weeks since mm -hmm. Tyrone. Yeah. Um, I think that could be a factor. Um, you know, because you can, you know, after the win against Tyrone, you can kind of come down and build and, you know, focus on on, on the Westmead game. So, you know, from a Galway point of view... Um, Where are Galway at the minute for you, Sean Oak? Oh, I think they're they're ticking along nicely. Um, uh, you know, there's no point in 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 you know producing nine out of ten performances at this time of the year. It's not that they're doing it on purpose, but or uh, uh, you know not producing nine out of ten performances. Even though I suppose you know the kind of final against Ligo was, you know, they were they were classy enough to be honest. That you know they did the business, but would say against Tyrone. It was just a kind of a very business-like performance. Uh, there was no kind of, um, you know, ha you know, real highlights as such. And um, I suppose a lot of the players played reasonably well. But you know, it was it was just a business-like performance. So, like, I am very happy with the way they're going. Um, I think, you know, if if Galway are to be contenders for the All Ireland Saturday is a game that, you know, they have to be winning, um, you know, because I suppose from a confidence point of view, if you were to go up to, you know, Mullingar and lose, um, you know, I think it would take a bit of the shine off off Galway. But I, I'm I'm, you know, quite happy with the way they're going, and I'm looking forward to the day that Tierney, Comer. Welsh, Burke, that they all give an 8, 9 out of 10 performance because we have not seen that yet. I don't want to see it on Saturday, but when we see it, you know, I think we'll be very, very hard to beat. There are things you definitely don't want to see it on Saturday. <laughs> no, definitely not. No. It's, it's, well, he's right though, and it's, I suppose when you look at the top teams though, they have three or four forwards. And I think whoever gets over the finish line this year, if it be them three or four forwards, whoever comes to the fore at the right time, will get over the line. And we'll just say, I suppose we had a shootout between Clifford and and Shea Morris last year. Do you know what I mean? But if you had the likes of Tierney or, or what do you call him, your full forward? Damien Gore. Yeah, if you had one more just firing on that day, it could have been enough to get you over the line. Do you know what I mean? And... Um, it's the same with Dublin it's the same with all these teams if if they, they have to come right at the right time and if they do as you said there's there's X factor in that forward line Sean no? yeah sure what have you made so far of watching going on this year um, you use the phrase there Sean business like I think as you said they haven't set the world alight by any stretch of the imagination they stick to a process they're all very very comfortable in the ball they're a massively physical side. They're a huge side. Um, all very comfortable in ball, as I said. And then they have such X factor from, you could say, their half back line to their full forward line that if you shut down, just say, their full forward line, you could have McDade or you might you might have Sean Kelly or your midfielders there that are chipping in with three or four points. So, like, they have threats all over the field. And I do think they have progressed from last year, I suppose they nearly came a little bit under the radar. Um, so I've been very, very impressed with them. And I think there's, funny enough, they're actually still kind of under the radar there. That everyone's still talking about Kerry and Derry and Dublin and all these sides. And I said, I think they were the only side in any of the provincial finals that actually got um, a win. I know there was a couple of draws. Derry drew, um, Dublin drew, Kerry were bet. Do you know what I mean? Clear, we're bet like so. Um, they have a very strong panel. I know I'm promoting. I'm nearly, I'm nearly there. I nearly have the, an all, I nearly have an all Ireland medal on their neck. But like, I'm only pointing out the things that are visible there for everyone, you know. And they're just, they're just, they're, they're very, very, um, they're very good now at the moment. They don't have any huge injuries, and yeah. they'll be hard stopped. 
And can I, just one thing there, Paul, uh, Ger mentioned about their physicality. Um, we, I'm just showing my age now, we had a 25-year wave uh, down at the Connor final, so things were running behind schedule. And we were out on the pitch uh, in our suits when they ran out onto the pitch and they ran past us, right? Now, you know, I'd know one or two of them. You might, you know, bump into them in the street in their, in their civvies. But they were like a herd of buffalo. You could nearly feel the ground shaking as they ran by. And, you know, we, we were just looking at each other and we were like just gobsmacked. They're just massive. You know, when the jerseys are tight on them, they're just bulging. And they're all, you know, height-wise as well. You know, Matty Tierney's six foot plus. Um, you know, John Maher's a big man. Conroy's a big man. Comer is... Is huge. Um, you know, they're they are big. Killing McDade, you know, huge, huge men. So, yeah, Peter Cook, yeah, yeah. So, you know, like that's 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 certainly something in their favor. And I know the game has gone, you know, obviously in terms of preparation, that it lends itself to you know big guys like that. But you know, they're just they're just very impressive physically. Just on that channel again, if you're, just from the team that did start against Tyrone, it's it's very hard to know will Jack Lim play um, this weekend after the belt he did take from Frank Burns. Um, yeah. That's the only really change you probably expect to see. And Colin Sweeney came on for him and was just sensational against Tyrone. He really did turn that game on the head. So if you're looking at any changes, that is probably one of the only changes that we might see this weekend. Yeah, that's true. Um, like go or Porik has a has a bigger deck of cards to 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 use than he had last year, so he has those options. Um, I think between guys coming back like um, Peter Cook and fellas making progress, you know, you have about six or seven extra players than what he had last year. So yeah, I agree with you. Um, Carl Sweeney did very well when he came on for Jack Glynn. But, it, you know, it depends. You know, they're going to sit down and they're going to look at the Westmead team and they'll, you know, they'll pick horses for courses type of thing. Um, I mean, like Jack Glynn and Johnny McGrath in the two corners, you know, they're they're fabulous players. Um, you know, they're just so tigerish. Um, and the, the, the only, I suppose, you know, you hear people talking... Height-wise, and what's going on about all the six footers? The they're they're not, you know, very tall. So it is a possible area where Galway could be exploited. Um, but it's it's good to know that Owen Kelly is very close to you know being fully yeah. fit. And so I would say for Mike Cullen in the league, so he's he's close to coming back. He's close to coming back. So he would be a guy that I think will feature at some point. And if, if if you are, you know, intending on using him, if Galway get to the latter stages, well, it's, you know, you need to be using him at this point. So, you know, he could be a guy that, you know, he could be a somebody that they could just drop into the line out for, uh, for Saturday. But, um, you know, any other changes? Um, Maybe Rob or, Finnerty to come in. Um, you just don't know. He's kind of been coming on, coming off. So he could he could possibly break into the team. He could, yeah. And it was interesting the last day as well against Throne. We said Tom O'Callaghan got uh, the whole second half, which you know he, he he was a guy that was only been brought in maybe for the last five ten minutes. So you know, I'm not saying they're going to start him the next day, but certainly he's he's a guy that uh, they think a lot of if they're bringing him in at halftime against Throne. Think, and of think, course, oh, yeah. go on. Yes, yeah, sorry, Jeremy. Or, or go ahead. No, just do you think that Galway will go down fully respecting Westmead, or will they maybe roll in three or four changes and say, right, okay, these lads need a few minutes? Well, you see, it's not that they wouldn't respect Westmead, but you know, Porrick has previous on this, so like we only have to look at the the goalkeeping situation, the the big game against Roscommon in Hyde Park in the Connacht uh, semi-final. I mean, we, we, we put Bernie Powering goal. 
So it's not, and obviously Porik fully respects Roscommon. It's not that, you know, by by throwing in maybe the likes of Owen Kelly, um, whomever, or Tomo, or, you know, that they disrespect Westmead. It's just, you know, I think, um, you know, it just gives them, it gives them experience uh, without weakening the team. You know, so, no, there's no, and, you know, the, like I said earlier, the cat is out of the bag. I mean, your performance against uh, Armagh, yeah. you know, Galway would be absolutely uh, off, out, of their, out of their minds if they didn't uh, treat this game with anything but the utmost um, care. Yeah, particularly with the way the whole Ireland series has been so fair, you can't really take your eye off the ball. The game has been so close. And Jer, what's the mood like in Westmead? Um, obviously coming up short against Derma on Saturday, 113-112. to Is it a positive step forward or is it more so that's one Westmead should have won? I think it's a bit of both. Um, definitely, they were the better side for the game. Um, they were very, very unlucky. As you said, a high ball into the square. Um, I think it was the one time that a high ball within Kevin McGuire was in full back line. And um, Kevin has just, he was on Reno Neal that he takes out basically their best player, the opposing team for the last 12, 13 years. There's a huge presence in around the square. Um, but I think, being honest, I suppose, from a Westmead supporter's point of view, we're probably anxious going up to Armagh. It's a hard place to go and get a result. And we're kind of saying, Jesus, anything could happen up here. So from a performance point of view, um, I thought they executed everything they wanted to for 60 minutes. They can control the ball. Um, we've struggled against Northern teams, you know, for years now, um, just the way to set up their system and all the rest. So it was good to actually see us controlling the ball, picking the holes, breaking down a blanket defence. Um, another thing I just, I'll add to it as well, I suppose, from Armagh's point of view, it's the emotion from playing in, in a provincial final as well. Uh, I, I've played in a couple of them now. Obviously, I never got as close as, as Armagh did to beating Derry. Um, but to bring yourself back up to play again, it's difficult. You know, so it's emotionally draining and um, Sean O referred to it there regarding just say the two week break for Galway and the week break for Westmead. Their big challenge now will be to dust themselves down, reset, refocus and to put in their big performance in. They're on their home soil so hopefully that will give them the energy to be a big crowd, it'll be a sunny day. So, um, but I do think the lads walked out there saying, you know something, we can mix it with these these teams and um, I just hope they can they can they can develop that and they can push on this weekend and have a right go right go go Galway, you know. Jerry, just on that, there's obviously I chatted to you last year after the Talton Cup and it was a, a, a huge win for you. And there was real momentum with Westmead building. But like what's the perception now? Do you feel these players are one hundred percent good enough to be competing at this level? I think everyone, well, I suppose last year, you get the exposure from the Talbot Cup that you see these players um, in action, in Crow Park and high-profile games, where if that, um, we'll say, a secondary competition wasn't in place, you wouldn't get to see them. And there is fabulous footballers in Westmead. We got to see that last weekend. Um, we've brilliant forwards, you know, we're at leg side, in fairness. And... An interview there last week with the Independent, and they said to me, they were like, um, have they made the step, or do you think the Talton Cup was was um, good to them? Well, I think these three games will tell a lot to see, right, okay, the Talton Cup does work. They've played high-profile games, they've performed in them, they can mix it with the best of them. And, like, we were, we were one high ball away from getting a huge result away from home going into this weekend, all the play for so answering your question and getting away from it as well a lot will be a lot will be told in the next couple of games and I just hope that they put big performances in and that you know they keep plugging away and plugging away and I said it started started when the group was met out obviously a difficult group 
that it was going to go down to the last day, probably against Tyrone. So it'd be great to have something to play for in a neutral venue against Tyrone. You know, it, it, even if Tyrone beat Armagh, it'll still probably go head to head against Westmead and Tyrone. You know, yeah. does Kizak Perry play a factor? If you're looking on from the Sunday game, looks real tight. The Dunn store is behind one of the goals. Does it play a factor? Do you feel if we get? I suppose it is a tight field, yeah. Um, it probably plays into Galway's hands more than Westmead, to be honest. Because um, just from the sheer physical size. Um, so Westmead will have to be very, very composed on the ball. Um, don't be breathing life into Galway with turnovers. So, um, but I think home advantage is going to play a huge factor by the end of this ta- or the end of this group's f- group phase. And um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. As I said, Galway are so structured, and I suppose they nearly seem laboured at ball at times, for a better word. Um, will they and sunny ground just open up a bit more? And maybe there's a few more holes there for Westmead to kind of go at. Um, so. Yeah, I don't know. It'll be interesting. I think the weather will pay a lot. As, as Sean Oak said there with, with Tyrone and Galway there a few weeks ago, it was Salt Hill's a big, a big, a big place, but um, conditions played a factor as well. So um, hopefully, it'll the, the the pitch will play to our advantage. <laughs> <laughs> and Sean Oak, you you talked there about Galway players that might come into the team, but for these players, if Port does. Give the opportunity. It's it's the opportunity there for players to try and cement a spot in this team. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, that that said, I I would think that you know if if you know, I know it's very much a squad a squad game now, but I, I think Parik knows his or he's very close to his best fifteen. Um, I suppose you know there are a couple of 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 question marks. So so where does Killian McDade play? Do you play? Where him does he s- play for you? I like if he plays at seven. I mean, what a luxury! Um, you know, to have him as as your wing back. Um, you know that's huge. But that depends then on we say John Maher. You know who had a fantastic league. Um. You know, did okay against Sligo. Was a bit quiet the last day. Uh, I think he was taken off at some point in the second half. So, you know, um, he he'd probably need to up his performance a wee bit in order to allow Killian McDade to stay at number um, at number seven. Um, I mentioned the own Kelly. You know, possibly as a as another cornerback instead of. Possibly Johnny McGrath, even though Johnny McGrath has been done has, has done superbly. It looks as if the goalie situation is, you know, that Conor Gleason is the firm number one, uh, and then up front, you know, you've your you've you've Comer, you've Welsh, you have Peter Cook, you have Manny Tierney, you have Johnny Heaney, and and Ian Burke. That looks like your, you know, your starting six. You've Robert Finnerty waiting on the wings, but you know, it's. You know, teams teams evolve as they go through the championship. Even though, you know, there's teams that get to an All Ireland final. You know, usually there's only maybe one question mark over maybe over maybe one position at that stage. So yeah. Porrick is pretty close to, you know, to that at this stage of the championship. You know, whether of which they go any further, um, you know, I think. Injury wise, we've been, you know, last year and this year, we've been reasonably lucky. There hasn't been yeah. any, like, I mean, I suppose the biggest get out of jail. is like the biggest one to this weekend, whether he's fit or not. Yeah, well, actually, I heard an interesting one about him. Seemingly, he broke his jaw about two or three years ago, which necessitated a plate being inserted into his jaw, which actually prevented it from breaking against Tyrone now that that's what that's what I've heard and I've you know that he's he's fine um but like the biggest get out of jail card that we've used has been the Damien Comer uh knee injury against Roscommon there in the league yeah I mean I was that we were on this show <laughs> oh yeah I yeah because I I think I said that if he was gone our season's over you know um 
but luckily, you know, it was only bone bruising or something like that. But look at, like, you, if you're a manager, you want the players, everybody on the panel thinking, I, if I play well, I have a chance of making the team. You know, I mean, it's, it's a hard, like, because in reality, that's not the case. But it's, it, it's a hard thing to juggle, um, you know, trying to keep everybody, you know, like, in, no, no, interest is the wrong word, but, you know, feeling that they have a very good chance of playing some, some you know, some part, um, you know, in the championship run. But, um, you know, Saturday, like, you know, he's not going to put out a weakened team ranting like that on Saturday against Westmead, but he might, you know, he might, he might throw in sort of maybe some curveball in terms of a, of, of a, of a, of a first 15. Jared, just on Westmead's matchups, um, who, who do you expect now, Westmead? Obviously Shane Walsh, Damian Comer are probably the two big matchups for them. Who, who's going to pick them up at the weekend? Just I can't be giving away the secrets here, can we? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you'd, I don't know. You'd imagine um, Kevin McGuire might go on Walsh or Comer. Um, Has Ronan Wallace been injured or is it just not starting? He hurt his hand. No, I think okay. he's on the way back, but if you want to risk him. Um, so there's a lot of football still to be played. Um, he's he's a big loss now. In fairness, uh, he has a lot. He adds a lot of X factor to our, our back line there. Um, but I just I think I suppose from a Galway's perspective, they all need attention. And you know, I think Westmead's structure and how how to play will be how they'll nullify the threats and how they how they utilize the ball. I think if they if they get turned over and are sloppy in possession, they're in big trouble. And I suppose that can be for any intercounty team, you know, they, everyone has X Factor in, in their forward lane, but um with matchups, it's it's hard to know. I think I think Westmead will actually go right and say it here. Everyone has to, has a good fella to mark. They're just gonna line out one to seven. And um any good forward lanes rotating there, you'll have Comer in for a minute, you'll have Shane Walsh in for a few minutes. So it's been it's been comfortable in your in your system and in your structure and trusting the lads around you. For 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 goal supporters, Jerry, it's been fascinating. Um, Sean Kelly at fullback for us because Ross Common had Dylan Moran a midfielder and they tried to man mark Sean Kelly. And yeah. it's I'm sure as a forward, it's something you absolutely hate when you see this type of back and he's going to run forward at any stage he gets, particularly when he's number three on his back. And that's a, that's going to be a big challenge for Westmead this weekend. Yeah, and like there's such running power. Um, it's just interesting to even see here Sean saying about um, Killian McDade. You know, far to have him wing back. I think he's he's nearly too far away from goals there because you know he was the best midfielder in the country um, last year. I remember looking at the iron final. He probably went under the radar because the two boys just gave an exhibition. But he couldn't finish with six points to play. Um, that day he missed two kind of scorable efforts. But um, yeah, a nightmare. But again, uh, further down the line, looking from a Galway point of view, will he be able to do that going up against Dublin and Kerry and these sides? Um, we know that the genius of Clifford and all like that, he's not going to be tracking him the whole way down the field. So I suppose if once he doesn't get turned over or if there isn't a bad pass or something like that that he's exploited there, um, of course, he's a huge threat. As you said, it's great that the other teams are folks and that far, far down the field that he's actually um, taking the attention off your forward line who you want taking shots and goals. But um, yeah, just look, they've, you've threats everywhere. That's, that's just the reality of it. A few key matchups for goal as well, Sean. You could see a battle here between uh, Sean Kelly and John Heslin this weekend. Yeah, you could. Um, I mean, obviously, John Heslin wore 14 against Armagh. Um, Sean Kelly's our full back. But, like, Jared know this better than me, but I would say in the highlights reel against uh, Armagh, like John Hesen kind of was out the pitch. I noticed on a few, he doesn't stay in there all the time. Would that be a fair point? Um, you know, he's not, it, like, I'm not sure, like, but 
is he a target man all the time in there? I'm sure he is, obviously, some of the time, but I think he drifts out. Um, I suppose he would want to be careful. Like, Sean Kelly is very unusual. I know we've spoken about him before. Um, just, like, how many fullbacks are attacking threats? Um, there's very few, really, that have the same end product as, as Sean Kelly. I don't think, you know, there was a call there for, you know, for Sean Kelly to be moved out to the middle of the park. I mean, I think he played there last year in the Division Two League final against Roscommon, but he just doesn't seem to be able to um, make the same runs from further out the field yes. that, than he's able to do at full back. And I think it's because, um, you know, when you're playing in a position for so long, like he is at full back, you 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 know your moments when you have to go. It's a different canvas when you're out in the middle of the park. And also, I suppose you've been marked, you know, a small bit more tightly. Um, but certainly if those two are up against each other and they're marking each other on, and, and I, I'd expect they will uh, on Saturday, it'll be, you know, the, 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 the first thing, you know, you pay for your price of your ticket. And that's, you know, that's sort of box office matchup that you, you know, you want to see, you know, two top quality footballers. And um, I think John Hislin, anytime I see him, you know, he's just, he's a brilliant footballer. Um, you know, and obviously, you know him personally, Ger, like, but he seems to have a, a very kind of a relaxed attitude towards the whole thing. He seems to be a level-headed guy who enjoys his football, but does his farming. <laughs> You know, um, you know, and 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 still, like he looks in superb shape, um, you know, but just seems to be a real a real leader as well. So like he he is Wes, I suppose Damien Comer or or, or or Shane Welch, but you know, certainly a great player. What kind uh, of players Yeah, no, just just to add on that, I think I think John has to be. I suppose clever the way he plays um, Sean Kelly at the weekend. If I was marking him, I'd be dragging him into that full back lane as much as possible. Um, because if if John kind of drifts out a bit, it's probably playing into Sean Kelly's hands. So I suppose you're trying to exploit, we'll say, Sean Kelly's weakness for a better word. Like he, he doesn't really want to be in the full back lane. It nearly seems that he's used there because I don't know if you have an alternative there, but it'd be right in saying that. Um, you wouldn't be, I don't know, like, is he a tough man marker that you'd associate in your full back lane? Um, so I think if I was Desi in there, I'd be kind of saying, right, here, you know, something okay, he needs attention, obviously, when Galway had the ball, but here, if he's if he's matching up with you, let's drag him back into that full back lane. He's not going to run 150 yards every single time, you know what I mean? So, um, I do think it'll be a very interesting matchup. I do think, um, both. Will have a huge say in it, and it'll be interesting to see who comes out with that. Yeah, just one, you know, one thing about Sean Kelly that you know, the more you see him play full back, the more you notice he doesn't break forward. Let's say Galway are three or four points up, and they don't need a score from him. He's happy to stay back there, but it's it's kind of when they need, you know, when they need a score, when they need a moment of inspiration. That's when he does it. Um, so if I was Desi Dolan, you know, that's that's when you mark him. It's when, you know, when you get really tight on him, when, when Galway need a score, because there's nothing sure that he's going to, you know, just try and provide that inspiration. And Sean, would you like to see, would you like to see Galway on the front foot in this game and maybe bring more numbers forward because maybe against Tyrone maybe it was the weather conditions now but there definitely was stages where it was maybe a bit too slow on latter yeah it, well it was I think Porrick referenced that in, in a post-match interview especially when you know we were down to 13 men or they were down to 13 men for 10 minutes we were still a bit ponderous in possession um, you know I mean dare I say it but you know, people used to people used to, you know, I suppose not criticize, but get frustrated. Uh, maybe three or four years ago, or you know, when Galway used to play like that, 
Um, you know, we were very ponderous and, and we moved away from that. But, you know, there was a touch of it last Saturday against Tyrone. Um, I think, you know, I did I did mention earlier about, um, you know, timing your run in the, you know, if you are to get to, you know, an All-Ireland final and compete in it. But, but at the same time, you know, OK, we gave we gave a good performance against Sligo in the Connor kind of final. But I think on Saturday, you know, the the would say the opposition would be of a much higher calibre Westmead than 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 Sligo. I think what you said there, you know, on the front foot, um yeah, it wouldn't do any harm to, you know, to you know, f- for their confidence uh, to have a have a have a you know have a right go at it. And you know what I said earlier there, you know, three or four of the forwards to be on song to kind of have that as your as your your aim, um, you know, rather than, you know, kind of hoping it'll happen later on. If that's if you uh, progress, Jerry, you're 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 obviously very hopeful this weekend. But do you just see go having a bit too much here? You'd imagine so. Let's be honest. They're the form team, as I said, in the county or in the country. So, um. I suppose it was like going to our MA game, going on form, you'd be like, here, if we got within five or six, it'd probably be like, okay, it was a decent performance. But as I said, home advantage um, plays a huge factor. Hopefully the lads recover quick enough, uh, I suppose, emotionally, physically, that they can um, put in a big performance. I know they've played in a, in a cha- couple of challenges against Galway recently, we'll just say over the last six months or whatever. So... So, you know, they'll have some data there and they'll have some video analysis stuff there already and I suppose car- comparisons and matchups. So like um I just hope, I do hope they go out, I do hope they have build on last weekend, take the learnings from it, um, and just keep developing it. And as I said, that's all you can ask for from from Westmead point of view. I just I just think it'd be inter- it's interesting just what Sean was saying there with I suppose You'd like to see Galway going up a, a step, we we'll say, in performance. Uh, it's it'd be interesting to see managers' take on how they actually manage this period. Is it mm. a time to get a bit more into the legs, or like our our teams training hard now? We'll say, or Dublin saying, right, okay, it's not something. Three teams go through over four here. We're going to train hard. So the last team to get a good block of training in, maybe I'm a bit, little bit heavy legged, but. It's going to it's going to um, play dividends in an Ireland semi final or quarter final. So I think you have to take that into account as well. You don't know what's going on behind the scenes, and I do think you could say your top teams are using this time to really get the last bank of work in um, before the big big games was set. Yeah, because even if you look at you obviously have the game this weekend and then there's a break, but then you have your last group game, and I think. I don't think there's a break between the last group game and the prelim quarterfinals. So it's 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 really it's really this weekend, Sean, where I think you're gonna see a rise in tempo for most teams here this weekend because it's it's starting to heat up now. Yeah, it is, but like at the same time, you know, three out of four teams go through. So yeah. Um I'd say maybe the last round, I think Ger mentioned it there, you know, uh, if, if teams have something to play for in the last round, that's when you'll really see uh, the temperature rising. I mean, we saw it with the Munster Hurling Championship, how, you know, it's a different game when if, if you're out, if you're beaten, you're gone. Uh, so that's not, that's not going to happen until maybe, well, not maybe, but until the last uh, fix or, you know, um, the, the last set of fixed the last round, yeah. But no, that's interesting what you said, Jer, about you know teams, you know, like possibly Dublin because they have been you know fairly flat. I'm expecting them now to, yeah. I'm expecting them to catch fire sometime. And you know, so I still think there's an All Ireland in that group. You know, before they sign off on their wonderful careers, but um, yeah, that's interesting. Some teams could be doing that. Uh, I'm not a sports scientist, so I don't know. Um, 
it, it's new to everyone, Sean. You know, like this, this, yeah. this form that's new. So, like, uh, it'll be huge learnings from from the management perspective to say, right, this is a template how we manage this new format. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I think there's yeah. a lot of stabbing in the dark there. Whoever whoever wins the All Ireland is probably going to have the strongest panel to play from because there's still a lot of football to play. Um, as you said, the temperature is going to rise. Their games are going to come thick and fast. So it's whoever manages that time period, isn't it? Yeah, and like, absolutely. It's, it's just it's just funny that it, like with Dublin there, I suppose you're saying like they've been flat and you're waiting for them to catch fire. But in the games that really, as you said, really mattered, they completely dispatched of Derry, probably the most informed team in the country at the time. Annihilated loud as well. So like, I think they're experts in just timing their run at the right time. And like they've got that from winning five or six All Irelands in a row, you know that you have a nucleus of ten players there that have been there and done it. So it's just interesting. Like, there's loads of talking points on it, isn't there? Yeah, there is. No, that that's interesting what you said about, um, you know, the annihilating uh, Loud and Derry in the league final. You know, games that I suppose you know there was a bit of silverware for the Derry match and and for the Loud game. So you're right. Whereas the last day against Roscommon, you know, they, they were so pedestrian in the first yeah. half, but they just have such an abundance of riches, um, you know, that I know we're veering, I know this is a goal or a goal we were yeah. in chat, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I just think Dublin, you know, they're just, I, I think they'll catch fire at some stage. It's just timing your run. It's whatever times the run best is going to see it out, you know. John, do you just expect Galway to have too much here on Saturday? Um, I, I, I would think so. Um, you know, I think I think they'll treat Westmead with the utmost of respect. Um, I was just looking at the 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 bookies. I don't bet, but um, Galway are one to ten, and Westmead they're thirteen to two, and the handicap is plus seven, which is like. That's a that's a fair handicap now. Uh, I I don't know if I'd agree with that, um, but I I would expect uh, Galway to 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 win the game on Saturday and maybe not win it comfortably on the scoreboard, but at the very least, you know, be in control. They never looked like they were going to be beaten against Tyrone. You know, to have that same level of 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 control over the game, um, I'd expect that on Saturday. The big question I have is. Who's going to wear the maroon jerseys? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I like our white ones, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> you imagine West me to be wearing them this weekend at home. Yeah, but yeah. You could have you could have two teams wearing both of their away kits. It often happens. Uh, well, we saw we saw we saw Derry and our match. I mean, so, something, went, something went bad there, or something yeah. went on in the background. I would say one. One wouldn't roll over, the other wouldn't either. Well, please yeah. God, we're both not wearing maroon this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, like we'll we'll recognise West. They ruined the maroon jersey with the big Reynold logo on the front. I That's think gone. The other one's gone, Sean. So What's it gone? Is this? I it, did I not see it? Did I not you're, see it? No, you're not. I, you're not a staunch Westmead supporter by any means. So sorry. Apologies. <laughs> apologies. <laughs> I was looking at the retro jersey. I actually think it was more at the, the nicest jersey this year, so it was so here. <laughs> well, and and I the odds no. and the odds were the exact same for the Armagh game, but he's so Yeah, 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 that's fair I enough. Have, yeah. I have the I have the house in Westmead, so I have this again. <laughs> <laughs> and um Jer, any any places you're recommending on Saturday for Galway supporters to go to before the game? Plenty of were you in the flat last year, lads? No, no, Where? the flat, no. you know the no, I ah, know. No. Mullingar is a lively spot now. There's been, there'll be a good, there'll be a good atmosphere around, um, especially bringing a big team to town. You know, um, there won't be a lack of food or drink wherever you're going. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Yeah, no, as as I'm saying, it's go with me Saturday uh, round two. Uh, of the All Ireland series, uh, Galway looking to make it two out of two, and Westmead will be looking to get their first win in the campaign. So it's it's a huge game uh, to look forward to. 
that's all we have on our podcast for today. And if you're listening on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. It helps the channel grow and everything. But uh, lads, thanks a million for coming on. Thank you. We are now delighted to announce our second sponsor of the podcast. Harper Finley are a professional service recruitment company operating nationwide and are dedicated to helping people find their dream job.